All right, 357 Magnum versus 40 Smith & Wesson, the king of the stop in power rounds. I know that term is really uh, hard for people to, to hear, stopping power. I know it, it, it's a ridiculous term, but basically when people mean that, they mean, you know, how effective is that round? Is there a little bit more effectiveness in stopping a threat versus other rounds? And there's a lot of charts on that. I don't... I don't buy into those charts necessarily, but what I do buy into is street credibility. And both the 40 and the 357 Magnum are known to be really good. You know, you get some charts that say 9mm plus P plus P plus is more effective than 40 and more effective than 357 Mag. But on the streets, those rounds aren't used, and if they are, you know, it really doesn't add up to being more effective. But the 40 and the 357 Magnum seem to be. And what I want to do today is I want to compare two rounds that are similar weight. So our 40 Smith & Wesson is a 155 grain jacketed hollow point. Our 357 mag is a 158 grain semi jacketed hollow point. Interesting thing about this is our energy numbers are pretty similar. Um, the numbers are not on the box here for our Remington HTP, but on Remington's website it is. And we're looking at a 155 grain 40 at 1205 feet per second, 500 foot pounds energy. That's pretty good. The 357 mag, 1235 feet per second, 535 foot-pounds energy. So I'm going to use these two guns because they're, you know, roughly the same size of firearms and barrel travel. And I try to explain this a lot. People don't seem to get it. But basically, start of our barrel is our forcing cone here. And start of our chamber here, you know, for our 40, it, we have almost the same amount of barrel travel. And the guns are pretty much the same size. So that's why I find them viable to be comparisons to each other. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test. Four layers of denim, followed by three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle, followed by a quarter inch MDF, which is medium density fiber board. It's actual wood, it's like compressed uh, particle board. And to more clear ballistics. This kind of represents hitting a chest shot, ribs or sternum. And without it kind of represents hitting a gut shot. So I'm going to do a shot with each round with the MDF. Then I'm going to pull that MDF out and do a shot without it. So we get chest shot, gut shot. We'll kind of get a comparison to how that round compares to you know itself without the medium density fiber board. And then I'm going to shoot at my steel target today. I think I'm going to go up to 10 yards here because that's a more legitimate distance and self-defense if we're really talking about putting some rounds down. Um, on a threat, that's going to be your maximum distance most of the time. So I'm going to shoot from 10 yards, uh, kind of do a little bit of rapid fire, see how they compare. So let's get started with this test. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the current graph. First up, we have our 40 Smith & Wesson. This is rated at 12.05 feet per second. So let's see what we get in my 5-inch M&P here. 1127. 11.39. 1129, 1133, 1094. So we are not anywhere close to that 1205 feet per second and on a five inch pistol we should have been. So 357, we're rated at 1235 feet per second. Let's see how close we get to that in this uh, Smith & Wesson 686. 1262, 1292. 1276, 1274, 1262. So we are above rated velocity. So don't always, you know, believe what you see on boxes or websites because this would indicate they are almost in the same power level from our information on those boxes. But in reality, it's not even close. So let's set our ballistics gel block, see what we get with these rounds. All right, first up we have our 40 Smith & Wesson. I do want to point out that it's not unheard of to get 500 foot-pounds with a 40. It's just that this one, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't. So first up, we're going to go through our MDF and see how it does. All right, let's try no MDF. All right, no MDF. All right, we're going to see what, what we got there. You know, this is the round people told me I needed to do, use was the 155 grain because the 180 grain over-penetrated. So we'll see how the 155 does.
All right, I don't see any bullets. It appears that we got complete pass throughs with both the MDF and plain gel. Now this is really cool looking. That's interesting. That's some serious damage. You know, that looks really good to me, but you know, what I'd like to see is those bullets to stop in this first block, which would be about 19 inches. Because that's, you know, over penetrating, but not necessarily a lot. That is not good to go over 35 inches penetration and just, it's gone. So, I don't know what to say about that. And with our MDF shot, you can definitely see here that we didn't have any indication of expansion in this first three inches. So, let's try our 357 now. All right, 357 mag, this is kind of a heavy bullet weight, so we probably will get kind of deep penetration, but we'll see. So first up, through our MDF. No MDF, just our gut shot. All right, that moved it. All right, so what we're looking at there is we caught both of those in that first block. Interesting, we actually have more penetration uh, with our MDF shot than without it. And here is the first three inches and the impact, impact of that. You know, that is like, yeah, uh, the, the mass of that hole is about maybe five times the size of that. That is a huge difference there. So with our MDF, we got a penetration of 18 and three quarters without it our total damage path it's hard to see is about 17 and a half i'll try to move this around to get a better view if we can here so what we're looking at there is that 40 looks so impressive it just over penetrated but our mdf our 357s on the bottom up on the top is our no mdf so overall i'm gonna definitely say i don't even have to tell you who won this one so let's shoot from that 10 yards and we'll see how these do all right, 10 yards for the target. I'm just going to pull up from kind of holster position because I didn't bring my holster. I'm going to see if I can just land a shot on target after flipping that safety off. Just a single shot to just kind of see what my, you know, instinctual shooting is with this 40. So, 40 Smith & Wesson. Tap. All right, so that's a pretty shootable round, and it should be for how <laughs> low that power was. We'll do the same thing here with our 357, see if I can get an instinctual shot. time um, to kind of prepare for a double tap so I'm gonna fire all six and simulate <laughs> either a crackhead or a bear <laughs> and 158 grand I think would do it so let's see what we got Overall, I'm just, we don't really have to figure out which particular round won this one. Obviously, a 357 did excellent. And for a 158 grain, this is probably the best 158 grain I've ever seen. Um, we had really good velocity up there, like 1260, 1270 feet per second. That's the right amount of power that we want to get out of a four inch barrel to not over penetrate, but yet it still has a lot of oomph there. 
So impacting something big or you might hit bones and it's not really gonna expand anyway, like a big bear, 158 grain is kind of that middle ground that probably work. Not grizzlies, <laughs> but you know, like black bears. And um, also when we're talking about, you know, personal protection round, we really didn't get over penetration at all. It's a very shootable round out of a four inch barrel. That 40 was a shootable round, but I just was not impressed with it at all. So that's what you get today between the 40 Smith & Wesson 155 grain HTP and the 357 Magnum 158 grain HTP. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.